become lover of wisdom. Whatever your hopes and dreams may be, you will arise from this guided inner journey much more confident, much more comfortable, and much more powerful than before. These guided meditations are meant to complement the teachings of my book, From Fear to Freedom Through Greek Philosophy. The subconscious really receives these messages as instructions. This is something the ancient Greeks were very well aware of, and that's why they had special dream incubation temples dedicated to the god of dreams, Morpheus, that we have heard of also in The Matrix. They called this type of learning hypnagogia. I've written and recorded them with a clear intention of helping people move from a place of anger, fear, frustration to a place of calm, confident self-leadership, essentially inner freedom. This is the place from where we can thrive and flourish as human beings. The ancient Greeks called this state eudaimonia. Now let's begin our beautiful journey. Take a deep breath, inhaling through the nose, holding that breath, letting it spread throughout your whole body, from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Allow the oxygen to nourish you and then exhale through the mouth, dropping your jaw open, allowing any stress to flow out of you. Observe the natural rhythm of your breath, like the waves of the sea. Your shoulders are relaxing. Your whole right arm is relaxing. Your whole left arm is relaxing. The abdomen area is relaxing. Your whole left leg. Your whole right leg. You feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper. The foamy waves ebbing and flowing on the shore. You are now walking along the shore alone. Your feet sinking into the soft, warm sand. Inhale the salty sea breeze and feel at peace as the warm sun kisses your face. An island basks in the distance, a lush green jewel in the sparkling sea. It has always been there, but you hadn't noticed it. It beckons you to its golden shores. Your curiosity is aroused. You decide you want to swim towards it. You take the first step. The water is warm and welcoming. Walking slowly into the water, it reaches your knees your waist. 
You push outwards with your arms, letting the sea envelop you, support you, as you float freely in its warm embrace, you feel cleansed and relaxed. Feel yourself floating, weightless, flowing. You see dolphins playing in the distance near the island. The seabed below is a glorious mosaic of life and colors. As you approach the island, you swim past ancient ruins. You have reached the sandy shore. Take a deep breath to marvel at the exotic beauty around you. A white robe rests on a rock in front of you with your name embroidered on it. There is also a gold medallion. You wear these and begin walking along the shore. Something is shining in the sand. It's a gold statue of a winged goddess. When you touch it, it transforms into a woman, a priestess. Her garments are flowing in the breeze. Her warm smile seems familiar like a long lost friend. Welcome to Eudaimonia, she says. This is a place of wisdom, wellness and wonder. We will proceed to the sanctuary where you can get insight on whatever has been making you anxious and upset in your life lately. Now she turns inland towards the palm trees and signals for you to follow her. You pass a sunny olive grove Further up the path, you see cypress trees, an orange grove. Near the top, there are majestic waterfalls. Finally, you reach a beautiful Grecian temple on the hill overlooking the whole island. You follow her up a wide marble staircase to the main entrance. Above it, there is an inscription in Greek, Ain Aristevin, ever to excel. You enter the grand chamber. Here there is a sense of quiet and tranquility. The priestess turns to you and says, this is the place of learning and transformation. Today you're going to learn about the evening routine of being a philosopher, a person who is conscious throughout their life. A philosopher rehearses their day in the morning in their mind and reviews their progress in the evening. At the end of each day, 
you will sit down with your journal and review. What did you do? What did you do well? Did you focus on your priorities? Did you repeat your bad habits? How did you improve? As a philosopher, you need to keep constant watch over yourself and put up each day for personal review. This is a practice that the Pythagoreans first initiated and was later carried on by all schools of philosophy, especially the Stoics. Marcus Aurelius, for example, sat down at the end of each day to reflect and gain insight. He wrote notes to himself, not for the public. Seneca says that if we want our minds to flourish, we must improve by asking questions such as, what bad habit did I improve today? What fault did you take a stand against for social injustice? And also, in what respect have you improved? Seneca compares his self-examination with pleading his case each night at his own court. He judges his actions and tries to make sure not to repeat the same mistakes again. A good man, he says, is glad to receive advice, while a poor man resents any guidance. He wrote to himself, I make use of this opportunity, daily pleading my case in my own court. When the light has been taken away, and my wife has fallen silent, aware as she is of my habit. I examine my entire day, going through what I have done and said. I conceal nothing from myself. I pass by nothing. I have nothing to fear from my errors when I can say, See that you do not do it any more. For the moment, I excuse you. Always be kind and forgiving to yourself when you do this self-reflection exercise. Show some self-compassion. You are trying your best after all, and that's all you can do. And even if you don't feel well, that's normal. Everybody struggles and experiences setbacks. Take this to heart. Always be kind to yourself. Epictetus advises us to ask questions before we go to bed. Additionally, he asks what duties are left undone to make sure that you get them done the next day. Self-analysis will help you to gain control over your negative emotions and actually will help you to gain control of your life. Because subconsciously you know you'll be judged at night, so you can lessen your anger and other emotional reactions. This will actually help you sleep better too. Most importantly, this reflection routine will contribute to your mindfulness throughout the day. The Greek word for attention and mindfulness is prosohi, and it is a prerequisite to be a practicing philosopher. If you want to express your highest self at all times, you must be aware of your actions. Otherwise, you might slip and fall into reacting to life. And you essentially give up being a philosopher. You give up being in your power when you live your life 
in a mindless matter. This is why the daily reflection routines are so crucial in being a practicing philosopher. If you don't know where you went wrong, how are you supposed to improve it? If you are constantly lying to yourself and living with self-deception, how can you move forward? This is the perfect self-improvement tool. Your mental preparation combined with self-analysis will lead you to a continuous learning and self-growth. You will become what the philosophers call a prokoptos. The best is to end this exercise with a sense of gratitude going over your whole day and remembering the things that you're grateful for. The ability to see, the ability to hear, the ability to walk, a simple roof over your head and food on your table. Think of all the simple things for which you are grateful for, because without these simple things, your life would be a lot more difficult. Repeat your deep affirmation three times mentally. Place your right hand over your heart and repeat it mentally. This is an oath to yourself. No matter what may happen in your life from now on, you will remember this oath. No one can ever take it away from you. Your transformation is complete. It's time to return. The priestess leads you outside the temple. The sun warms your face again. As you descend the stairs, a golden mirror appears in front of you, suspended in the air. In it, you can see your future. It's a bright, positive future. You walk with confidence and certainty. There's a smile on your face and your shoulders are back with your head held high. You are acting with ethos, handling all your businesses from a place of integrity and truth, attracting the right people to collaborate with. See yourself enjoying and appreciating life with enthusiasm and passion. You are being creative, attracting more affluence and abundance. You follow the priestess back in the direction of the shore past the waterfalls, down the hill, past the orange grove, the cypress trees, and further down the path, the olive grove. 
Finally, you arrive at the palm trees at the Golden Beach. The priestess smiles at you. This is where we part, she says. Go forth and shine your light. And if sometimes you feel like you want to renew yourself, Eudaimonia is your home and I will always be here for you. Just follow the sun and the voice in your heart. You turn to gaze at the brilliant sunset. When you turn back, the priestess is no longer there. There is only the small statue resting in the sand. You know that the priestess will always be with you, that you can always come back to Eudaimonia. like, comment, and share these videos with as many friends as possible. And you're welcome to support the production of these guided meditations through becoming a patron. When you become a patron, you can also have more say as to what types of meditations I upload. Is that you get to listen to these guided meditations without any advertisement interruptions. Please.